Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and this is the Lenormand Ring Card Video. The ring is a binding card, so take a look at the cards that surround it. What is it binding? Where is there a union or a commitment or obligation? This is the only card in the traditional system which is interpreted based on whether it's to the left or the right of the Seeker's card, as well as its proximity. With favorable cards, it typically references secure and continuous bonds or anything that we're committed to or bound to. With unfavorable cards, it may reference chronic issues or vicious cycles. The core function of the ring is connection, and its core energy is positive neutral. Now, when you see this assignment, you know that the card is positive at its core, but it's also easily influenced by the other cards rather than being a significant influencer on its own. That's where the neutrality comes in. When you see this card, consider words and phrases such as promise, union, partnership, engagement or marriage, a meeting, a meeting of the minds, coming together, coming full circle, a merger, going round and round, continuous patterns, obligations, routines, contracts, commitments, agreements, deals, oaths, pledges, something of value that we want to keep or continue, things that are interconnected. It may reference an inclusive situation as in binding several things together or exclusivity as in a union of two things while excluding the rest. The other cards and context of the reading which will tell you which you're looking at. It also can refer to the idea of foreverness. Now descriptively, the ring can represent jewelry, circular objects, uh, things of, of great value, things that spin or go in circles, contracts, binding objects such as handcuffs, a dog's collar, uh, places where only members are allowed or anything that progresses continuously without interruption. It can appear in animal readings with the mice to indicate separation anxiety. Uh, because it's a card that connects, it can represent bridges and can bridge the cards on either side. Describing a person, uh, physically they may have a round body shape, um, light coloring, they may have blonde or yellow hair, wear a lot of bling or just be stylish. Uh, describing their personality, they may be consistent, committed, agreeable and reliable, someone who values social connections, one who compromises, looks for common ground, and works well with others. They may be bound to another, such as through marriage. Occupations include mediator, marriage counselor, contract administrator, uh, contractor, bail bondsman, or a jeweler. In a daily draw, it often, often brings your attention to meetings, appointments, commitments, or obligations that should be attended to, as well as your um, committed personal connections. Uh, it may be referencing your, you know, the person you're bound to, right? Your partner. Um, the cards around the ring may reference something related to your daily routine. It's the card of, of a routine, right? It may appear in a descriptive manner to refer to your valuables or things that go around or are cyclical. It once appeared in my daily draw to remind me to pick up my antique clock from the watchmaker who repaired it. I mean, think about the face of a clock. It's round and the hands travel around un uninterrupted. In advice readings, it may advise you to uh, commit or uh, dedicate yourself to something or to keep a promise. It may ask you to bridge a gap or suggest that you continue a cycle. Uh, the other cards will tell you if you should continue a pattern or break out of a vicious cycle. Now in a work or business reading, it typically refers to uh, meetings, contracts, or obligations that must be tended to. It will also indicate um, that those you encounter at work will be in agreement and work well together. Think about the smooth rotation traveling around the ring with no obstacles, right? Okay, in a spiritual reading, it may ask you to make or honor your commitment to a spiritual practice or ritual or to place more value on your spiritual practice. It may ask you to dedicate yourself to a regular routine of uh, prayer, affirmations, meditation, or spiritual learning through books, videos, podcasts, 
all of which would be described by the other cards. If it's found with cards such as the scythe or coffin, it may suggest that current cycles or routines are no longer serving you and need to be sorted or stopped. In a relationship reading, as the card of commitment, it's generally positive or favorable, unless it's appearing to show that your love interest is already committed to another or connected to unfavorable things. It represents a solid bond or union, or with cards such as the heart, the anchor, or the bouquet, it may indicate an engagement or marriage. In health readings, the ring can indicate a physical contract, such as one for surgery or with a health care agency. It can also represent a commitment to taking care of one's health. It may show that more than one person or agency is working together regarding a treatment. With unfavorable cards, it may describe a condition that is chronic or cyclical. Anatomically, it represents the circulatory system. How could it not? <laughs> Rings are circular. All right, so looking at these lovely cards on the table. Um, yeah, a lot of bling, right? I like the rainbow reflections, the idea of the two rings, you know, interconnected. Um, this uh, Robert Places and Rachel Pollock's card, you know, obviously it's showing a, a ring of great value, right? Here we have the kitsch, you know, he's, he, uh, look, he opens the, the ring box and, and she's like, oh, thank God, he finally proposed. My dad thought he would never unload me. Um, oh, I love, I love my Brazilian dog deck. I used to compete. Oh, for many years I competed in dog agility. So I really love this card, the dog jumping through the, through the, uh, that would be the tire in agility. Okay. Now the fortune, uh, fairy tale fortune card says the ring romance and a bond of love. Now I know people are going to ask me, is the ring the card of romance? No, it's not, but you know, you, you know where she was going with that. Um, it's kind of like a, a promise, you know, the bond of love and, you know, a commitment. But the romance card is the heart. Okay, uh, the red owl verse card says, Beware the ring on the left-hand side, no positive tidings should then be implied. Hope for the ring on the right-hand side, then maybe you'll walk down the aisle with great pride. <laughs> You know, when this deck was, was uh, created, a, a woman really, you know, her, basically her only hope was to get married and to marry well. <laughs> there was a lot of pressure on her. Woo. Okay. Now, let's compare it to um, a couple other cards. Oops. So I'm using my maybe Lenormand for this. All right. So... You know, the love cluster, or you could call it the relationship cluster, um, consists of the ring, the heart, and the anchor. So I'm going to compare the three of them so you can understand uh, the differences. So let's compare the ring to the heart. The heart represents a loving connection, but with no indication of commitment, right? It could just be passion or desire. Whereas the ring indicates a commitment which may or may not involve love right like an arranged marriage or something okay um together you have put these two together and you could say you have a promise of love or passion or a loving union put the lily in there and you have i promise to love honor and cherish <laughs> okay we can compare it to the anchor because the anchor represents faithfulness dependability and safety right? It gives the relationship grip and, and steadfastness. It's not going anywhere for at least for quite a while. Um, whereas the ring indicates the initial joining together, um, the idea of exclusivity or the promise, the vow, right? The anchor will add grip and steadfastness to the promise of the ring. You could put it that way. All right. And we can also compare it to the whip um, because they're both cards of, of something continuing, right? Um, the whip represents disjointed, repetitive actions and the idea of effort, whereas the ring represents uninterrupted, continuous cycles and the idea of an effortless ride, smooth sailing. Ooh. I mean, you can obviously see just by my wording, which is positive and which is negative, right? Eee. Okay, now... 
Let me read you the plot. The plot. The Philippe Lenormand Original Translations. Okay, that's the, that's the acronym, plot. Okay, though I call it the original instructions, so I know I said to somebody it was an acronym for the Philippe Lenormand Original Instructions, and they were like, where's the T? <laughs> Okay, the ring, if on the right of the person prognosticates a rich and happy marriage, when on the left and distant, a falling out with the object of your affection or the breaking off of a marriage. Ooh. Okay, the original game instructions, that's the game of hope. Whoever finds the ring gets three marks or tokens. So this makes the ring an auspicious or favorable card that we could say moves you ahead in life, right? All right, the coffee card verse. Favorably placed, the ring foretold that a marriage was near, so that in, uh, the Lenormand would be to the right and near, right? Um, or it indicated a happy and lucrative friendship or union. Um, unfavorably placed, it warned the seeker to take precaution with friendships or contracts because you may be deceived. Or it could represent the loss of something valuable. So even the coffee ground readings saw the ring as a thing of value, not just a bond, anything of value. All right, so what do the method of distance guidelines have to say? Well, as part of the love or relationship cluster, this is one of the three cards we use to determine the state of any relationship, be it personal or business. The general rule is that you want this card near and to the right of the seeker's card. Being to the right shows that it's auspicious to the seeker, or we could say that they're moving into it as we read left to right. Falling to the left indicates a damaged relationship, a broken bond, separation, or indifference regarding the union, right? It's, it's weak when it's far, right? But we're talking about to the left, so they're kind of moving away from it. It's inauspicious when it's to the left, right? So we could just say that that's indifference for the union. All right, falling in the same column indicates a shift in the relationship. Which way it's moving would be determined by the present state of the bond, along with the story of the other cards, as well as a future reading. I mean, a future reading would show which way it moved, obviously. Um, when I say could be determined by the present state of the bond, I'm saying that if a relationship has been smooth sailing and perfect and all of a sudden the cards are showing that there's a shift well how you know which way <laughs> which way is it shifting it's, it was already perfect you know that's or if a, a, a relationship was very troubled and and they've been seeking help and they you know um and it's showing a shift well you can kind of at least hope that it's shifting the other way okay um let's see the closer it falls to the seeker the more control the seeker has over it or the stronger the bond okay now uh, the directional cue as I've already mentioned um, a couple times is uh, that when you read left to right so remember for you that that read directionally where um, you, sometimes you're reading right to left because of the direction the seeker's card faces you know for people who read like that you have to switch all this around but I'm sure you know that. Okay, so, but in, um, I only read left to right. So in reading left to right, and, and that's what the um, original instructions are referring to when they say to the left, that's for reading left to right. Um, the ring located to the left of the seeker's card indicates a solid connection or happy union. And if it falls to the left, it indicates, um, uh, did I say this right? If, I'm sorry, the ring, if it falls to the right, of the seeker's card indicates a solid connection and happy union. I want to make sure I say it correctly. If it falls to the left, it indicates separation or little regard for the union. Okay. Uh, example in a spread will be a grand tableau. So what do you know? I just happen to have one right here. <laughs> How do you like them apples? All right. And I'm using my new mini Lenormand de Marseille which I love. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. I just love this imagery. I know it's not for everyone, but but I loves it. Okay. Now, this was a GT for a woman who wanted to know about the next six months for her business and relationship. And I chose it 
uh, because the ring appeared for both. The ring falls, <laughs> beaker, beaker's hair. <sighs> okay, um, the ring falls with my work card, that's the moon. And that was the other thing she was asking about. And of course, it's always part of the relationship um, reading. Okay, now uh, the partner card, which is here. Oh, here, this is the seeker up here. All right, the partner card down here represents her business partner, who's actually a woman, but that doesn't matter. This deck only has two people cards. Um, as she's the most significant other person in the seeker's life. For the relationship part of the reading, I'm mainly looking at the love cluster, but chose to use the child right here to represent her boyfriend because this um, relationship, at the time of this reading, it was so young. And the seeker also had no children, so I didn't need it, the child card for that. All right, so let's start with her business. The moon represents her business because that's my work card, right? And it's very far, indicating that she has little control and that the, the bond is, is weak right now, right? Um, so when we read the cards around the work card, right, we can see what the main issues are. And I start by just seeing what cards are touching any life area card. Right? That's, that's before I even interpret them. I just want to see what's there to see what the main issues are. So we can see as we read the cards around here that we have conflict, right? We have loss. There's the mice. Conflict is the whip. Uh, we have um, troubles regarding communications and things in writing. We have the dark side of the clouds uh, facing the letter. Um, there are painful things she's bound to. That's the uh, cross and the, the whip touching the ring. Um, and let's see, what else can we say? Um, and oh, and these things have already begun to take shape. That's the stars, right? Um, and there are things that she can't avoid, right? That's also the cross. And it, you know, the stars, I should say the stars with the tower is showing that it's like already started, it's already set in, set in stone, we could say, with the tower. That's your longevity card. All right, so the ring card, as it describes her, um, as it describes her business, right? So remember the moon is her business, and now the ring is one of the descriptors around this life area card. So the ring is describing her business, and in that way it describes uh, represents contracts, meetings, her partnership, right? She has a business partner, remember? All things she's bound or obligated to, right? So then I, I go in and read the pairs of cards that are connected by the moon. So whenever I read the pairs of cards around a life fairy card, I'm reading the pairs that are connected by that card. I often say that as they pass through it. So I'm reading these two, these two, these two and these two because they all just look they all pass through you know in other words I'm not reading I'm not just reading these two together these two together like you know I mean you can do that but the cards will pick up on your regular way of reading and they will fall accordingly all right and this is how I always read okay so we can say that the future success of this business is dwindling Right, that's the mice and the star. Um, there's some trouble brewing regarding a legal binding contract, and we can also say this this references her long-standing partnership. Now, now think about that. There's there's trouble brewing, right? That's the clouds uh, regarding a legal binding contract, which a partnership is, right? Legal binding. Where am I getting that? Legal tower binding ring contract, right? Ring and and letter legal binding contract. Okay, um, there's a long history of repeated conflict and opposition. Long history of repeated conflict and opposition, right? With her partner and even with, with others, right? This is the garden out here, you know, maybe with the clients because, you know, think about it. A partnership, is, if the partnership is failing, it affects the whole business and the clients pick up on it and... Whoop. Off it goes. 
All right, um, we could say that communication is burdensome, that's the letter in the cross, and, um, and with the cross far from her, it will last throughout the six month period or, or beyond, right? Now, if we read around the ring now, as it represents her partnership, we can see that they're not seeing eye to eye and are at odds regarding what they want to achieve, uh, which is harming the reputation of the business. Right, we got the whip above, we got, um, um, well, we got the moon. Okay, we got the whip and the moon above, yeah. So there's, there's you know, it's harming the reputation. They're, they're at odds, there's conflict. It's harming the reputation of the business. Um, they've been repeatedly withholding information from one another. There's the whip and the uh, book. And neither of them is going to back down. It's, right, it's held there by the cross um, regarding what they desire for the business, the cross is stabbing the heart. So you can see this whole little corner down here. All right, so you know what? what is a business reading without looking at money? Because that, that's kind of the point of a business. <laughs> Even those non-profits, somebody's making money. Um, okay, so financially, here's the fish here. All right, so financially, you know, I remember saying that she's not in immediate grave danger because the fish is out of her reach, but it's just out of her reach. It's in the far zone, it's not very far. And I really said that also because it's being blessed by the lily and supported by the energy of the sun, all right? Um, though the control she has over her money depends at least partially upon others because the bear, it's still in her comfort zone, right? Here's the bear and here's the others, that's the garden. Remember, we're reading around the fish card for her the money that's coming in from her business, right? Um, so, so the bear is still in her comfort zone, and that says she still has some control over what's hers, but that she needs to protect it. So, you know, what is the bear facing? Remember, the bear has a directional cue. <laughs> the the rider, which is facing the stork. So. What does she need to protect herself from or who? The visitor who's bringing change. This is who, who wants what she has. And in this spread, that represented her partner. All right. Now, anything she starts will be a challenge or anything that is still young and growing is now facing opposition, right? That's the mountain and the child. Um, yeah, and her basic security is struggling to survive, but it's still there because the house is a card of her foundation and the tree is a rooted card, right? And the tree has, except for the coffin underneath it, but, but this is, you know, uh, shading the coffin, right? This is more powerful than the coffin. It's not, it's not um, stopping this end, right? But it's kind of like... Um, holding it in place for a while. It's still, the tree is still thrive. <laughs> wait, let me say it. The tree is still striving to thrive. All right. But it's showing that something is unhealthy. Something needs care and attention, right? Because it's striving to thrive. It's not thriving. It's striving to, you could even sometimes you can say it's struggling to thrive, right? So, and this is like, her, this is her foundation. This is her basic security. That's her home right there. So you could say the tree is, is kind of holding this in place. Um, and it's like there's struggle there. There's effort tr trying to, trying to grow, right? Needs some help. Okay. Now, looking at the cards that touch her. Well, She's standing on the stork, which means that change is happening now or coming soon because it's so close. But we also know that because the rider is bringing her change and that compounds the idea of, of speed and coming soon, right? Um, you could say that something's about, you know, change, right, is about to be left on our doorstep. Right, he's delivering it right to her. It's like ding dong, she opens the door. Oh, change, big change. Big change that, look at the fox at her back, looking at her. <laughs> big wrong change, right? <laughs> big sneaky change. 
Um, so the fox at her back is warning her not to trust people or situations that she thought were trustworthy. And then I immediately look to see where the, the dog is and the dog is far. Where's the dog? Here's the dog. The dog is far, which speaks of disloyalty and faces the coffin, which will be the result of that, right? All right, so she also has the mountain, another card from the gang of adversaries, right? We got the mountain and the fox in her comfort zone. Um, she's got the tree for stagnation and um, slow growth and striving to thrive. And she's got the birds for daily stresses and temporary hardships. Those are all in her comfort zone. So we can say that she's facing a lot of obstacles and delays. And the only thing that's coming soon is change. <laughs> right? Um, so then I look for her options card, her solutions card, and her, her uh, goal card. Right? What is her options card? The ways. Um, what is her solutions card? The key. What is her goal card? The anchor. They're all out of her reach at this time. So it's going to be a, a tough six months for her business. Right? The corners indicate loss and worries regarding missing information that will bring detours and comp uh, complications. We have the mice and her and the book and the snake. Um, and the fact that she falls in a corner, what does that say to you? It says that she plays a major role in what's happening during the time. She's framing this spread, right? So she's playing a major role. She's a, she's a major influencer up uh, on the top, too. And it also says there's a lot of changes, right, when somebody's um, in the, the corner, in their own corner. Um, in the final column, that's what I call the uh, fate line. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not what I call the fate line. I call that the bottom line. <laughs> but in the final column, it says that she's, um, she's got a lot of stuff behind her that she needs to deal with. Though at, at the top, right, she's actively influencing all of it. Okay, so now let's look at the bottom line. Um, I see that her journey is heading toward a split with her partner. We have the ways right above his head. Um, and, um, you, know, she, you know, I saw the, the anchor... I'm sorry, the scythe here with the coffin above it. It was like the, the straw that breaks the camel's back where she suddenly decides to like, um, you know, take the opportunity to cut the, uh, the key off, off her key ring, off the partner's key ring, you know? Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna split. Well, they did, but at the time of the reading, I said, that's what it looks like. That's where it, the journey is heading if no changes were made, you know? Okay, that's it for her business. Let's talk about the relationship and how the ring applies to that. All right, so as I said, the ring is part of the love cluster along with the heart and the anchor. And if you notice, all three have formed a constellation down here as far away from her as they could get. <laughs> Remember that the further something is from the seeker, the weaker it is and the less control they have over it. Now, the, the anchor far says that there's no stability, security, or, or hope, right? It's the card of hope um, for the continuation of the relationship at this time. Uh, the passion is cold um, or desire is dead. That's the heart far. And um, the ring being very far and to the left says that the bond is completely out of reach. That's being very far and won't continue during the time period. That's being to the left, okay? Now, if you read the cards around the child, remember that's her boyfriend, right? So if you read the cards around him, you can see what, exactly what he's all about. I always get a kick out of this because he's got a long-standing reputation for playing the field and not taking relationships seriously, right? Because he's got the tower and the anchor showing that he is who he is. He's been anchored in this for a long time. And, you know, he's got the clover here for, you know, just and next to the ways. It's kind of like, well, whichever way I feel like going today, you know, that's where I'll go. And he's got the, you know, the fish for just independently flowing next to the garden, seeing lots of others, right? I mean, he's definitely um, following his own path successfully. He's got the stars and the sun on either side of him. He's happy doing what he's doing. He's just doing his own thing, okay? So, I mean, the garden and the fish are lots of other people, an abundance of socializing. You know, we could say the ways and the clover, he's just grabbing luck, and, you know, at the moment that he decides to. 
Um, okay, so if we were to move the ring close to her, let's say we left all the other cards where they are, right? I know you're all wondering. Now say we put the ring over here. So now it's touching her, right? Whereas the heart and the anchor are still far away. Now, because of her position, I mean, it only has the option of being to the left or in the same column. So no matter what, it can't be to her right. So as long as it's to the left, it still shows a problem with the bond and you know, doubts that it will continue. But when it's very near, the bond is stronger and she has more control over it. It's still within her reach, right? So we could say that she may still be able to turn things around beyond the time frame of the spread, right? During the six months, no matter what, it's still it's over here. It's still behind her, okay? It's still basically a broken bond. But look how close it is. So you have to take that into consideration when you're talking to your clients. All right, it's still within her reach. Um, okay, I mean, when it's far into the left, it's you, you know it's beyond her reach. So you could say it's beyond hope. All right, so now when it's in the same column, let's put it in the same column now with her. It's indicating a shift in the commitment. Now you can see that as a warning to pay attention to the union, right? Um, the other, you know, no matter which way it's going, it's still in her column. So it's saying you still need to tend to me because I'm in the process of moving. I'm either going to go this way or this way, you know. Um, and the other cards will help you determine which direction it's shifting or, like I said, a, a, another reading in the future. Now, I know you're going to ask about this. Wait, let me put this back so it doesn't throw me off, throw me off my game. I know you're going to be asking, how do these apply to him? Because they're all fairly close to him. Well, the partner card, I'm only reading the cards, primarily I'm reading the cards that, that touch them, you know, not giving them all these zones and everything. You also have to remember who your primary is, and that's her. So, <laughs> but this is classic right here. So what I'm gonna say is the heart's not touching him and neither is the ring. And of course the ring is the furthest from him because he's not committed to her at all, right? He's not in love with her, but the anchor's there. <laughs> so along with these other cards, what did that say to me? It says, he, yeah, he's willing to hang out with her. Sure, he'll, he'll drop his anchor at her doorstep whenever he feels like it, but he's also gonna be dropping it in, on a bunch of other doorsteps too. So that told me all I needed to know. Okay. Woo, that's it for the ring video, my friends. As always, I hope this was an informative and entertaining. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.